learn from your past. Then pack your shit and get the fuck out of there. Hi, this is Coach MK, and this is The Morning Mantra. Hi, my name is MK Fleming. I'm a run coach based in Denver, Colorado, but this isn't a podcast about running exactly. Don't tell my clients, but we're never really talking about the running. When you know a craptastic event is coming, it helps to have a mantra to keep you centered and focused as you move through it. You don't have to be an athlete to be hashtag coached and loved by Coach MK, and if you are here, then you are hashtag winning at life. Before we begin, I'd like to warn you, I do reference my rape and subsequent cocaine use in this mantra. No graphic detail, though, and ain't that kind of podcast. Just wanted to make sure you knew before we went any further. Today's mantra is, Where's yours? And where is yours? One of my favorite songs is Baggage Claim by Miranda Lambert. Baggage claim, you got a lot of luggage in your name. It's about a woman whose boyfriend has consumed all of her emotional energy for way too long. She's had enough and she's moving on. His side piece can take care of his ego from now on. I don't know about you, but I did that for way too long in relationships. I did so much of the emotional heavy lifting. And not just for boyfriends, I did it in friendships too. I thought that was my job. I've been conditioned to think I was responsible for the mental health of everyone around me since I was very little. Conditioned to think that I didn't matter at all unless everyone around me was in fact happy. And the only way to make men happy was to hide my emotions, my wants, my needs, keep my strong will, big mouth shut. Remember? Strong feelings, strong emotions, anything other than total compliance could be the stroke of anger that killed my dad. We didn't ask men back then to control their emotions. And yes, anger is an emotion. We just punished women and children and minorities for having them. I often wonder how my life would have turned out had I not been raped. If you had met me as a kid, would you have considered me strong-willed? Today, for sure. For sure. At 19, for sure. But when I was 6, when I was 12, when I was 17, nope. They didn't know how good they had it. I was an emotionally neglected and arguably abused child who got tired of carrying everyone else's baggage. My rape was my final straw. After that, I was a mess. I own it. I was terrible. I was terrible to be around. I was anxious and angry and scared and furious. And I couldn't say why. If I can't play by the rules and win, guess what? I'm not playing. So I made my own rules. I did my own thing. I no longer recognized obligations or social niceties. I was still, for the most part, a decent human. It's possible to be both decent and a hot mess. Functional and dangerous only to yourself. Was I pleasant to be around? No. Were people actually scared of me, thinking I could or would turn on them or hurt them in some way? Also, no. I was like a zoo animal. People watched, but rarely approached. And I can't blame them. I mourn the 20-year-old version of me. And part of my recovery for the rest of my life will involve a process called owning my shit, then running off with it. Meaning, when I meet someone from my past, and somehow if my messiness comes up, I own up to it. I use the R word to explain that I was traumatized, but still responsible for my actions and apologize for how my trauma radiated into their lives. At this point, self-preservation and self-care kicks in because here are the two things that happen and it's always one of these two reactions number one the person i'm talking to backs up apologizes tells me i wasn't that bad and if i had been they wouldn't be here talking to me 
They then usually tell me what they were dealing with in their 20s. And even if we don't walk away besties, we do both walk away with a certain kind of peace and understanding that we didn't have before. These are the good conversations. Turns out people's opinions of me weren't as bad as I thought. That I was not as bad as I thought. The second one is a little more bleak. They double down, either pointing out specific messy things I did one after the other, making me apologize over and over and over again, or just not responding to my points directly. They will give me nothing and they validate nothing. The conversation is one long running joke and I am the butt of it. No mention of them. No mention of their shit. Nothing is their fault. And how could it be? They used drugs because I was there doing them too. That, I mean, it was because of me. Clearly, they had no control. They were powerless around me. These are the bad conversations that remind me that some people are just looking for a bullshit stick to hold. If I was that dangerous, why did you take my calls? Why did you show up where I was? Is it really? Am I that omnipotent? I let these people enjoy a moment of superiority. Then once it's clear which conversation I'm in, I make excuses and I leave. I never reach out to or make time for these people again. Therapy has allowed me to have different versions of the same conversation in my life today. That's what it's like to make peace with your past. I can't change it. And if you don't care what caused it and don't want to be around me, that's fine. If you can't talk, stop talking about it, though, if you need me to relive it in order to be near me, then you don't need to be near me. I can own my shit. I don't feel ashamed. I will not be the butt of your joke. I am more than the sum of my past mistakes. No one carries my baggage anymore. I got this. No secrets. No shame. Good luck beating me with a bullshit stick. I got places to be, yo. The past reverberates into my future through the compassion and the empathy I developed as a child. I will always remind people that they too are more than the sum of their mistakes because I am as well and I will not hesitate to share. But it stops there. I will not carry your shit, your baggage, or engage with anyone who plays the blame game. My choices are my responsibility and yours are yours. So, the mantra. In those moments when you realize you're talking to a person who will not own their shit, who will not own their own responsibility, their actions, or the chains of events, their actions set into motion. Stop. Hear my voice in the back of your head saying, yes, this is my baggage. Where's yours? And if they don't show you where it is, get up and leave. Do not interact with that person again. It'll do you no good. Like Miranda Lambert said, if it ain't obvious what has set me off today, behind every woman scorned is a man who made her that way. She left that man. You can too. You are coached. You are loved. And you are winning at life. And you are definitely winning at life if you subscribe to my Nuzzle Nut newsletter, follow me on Facebook, or follow me on Instagram. Feel free to do all three. 